Greek grammar beyond the basics, an exegetical syntax of the New Testament, was uh, in the making for 17 years. And I was concerned especially for what the language of the New Testament was, was all about. But I also was examining the uh, exegetical and grammatical literature. And one of the things I discovered was that Greek grammars, for the most part, were boring, tedious, uninspiring, and they also did not deal with what I would call the semantic situation or what most linguists call the pragmatics. In other words, they didn't show the relevance of syntax for exegesis. Now, one of the things I try to do is, and especially try to focus on, is this semantic situation. For example, when uh, an exegete says, I think in this passage it's a historical present, sometimes they do that without regard for how historical presents are actually used. Historical presents, as far as we know, at least for the New Testament and other Greek literature, are always third-person indicative verbs of some sort of action. They are not state of verbs. There's 415 historical presents in the New Testament, and a me is not uh, among them. So consequently, when an exegete looks at Romans 7 and says, I believe that these are historical presents, and therefore Paul is speaking about his uh, pre-conversion state, that, may or, that second aspect may, may, may or may not be true, but to use the grammar of historical present as an argument for it is not legitimate unless someone can produce other examples where someone uses a first-person verb and a me as a verb for historical presence. What I attempted to do in the grammar was especially to link grammar to exegesis, and this builds the bridge between learning syntax into exegesis so that students who have had first year Greek, then they work in Greek in, in the exegetical syntax, and that immediately moves them into understanding how exegesis works and how syntax is really the backbone to exegesis.